All right, so for our first activity, what we're going to do here is get acclimated to our, our process. We're going to use a couple different software as the, as the semester goes on, part one, two, and three. We're going to start off with a basic uh, code editing software first. Uh, on Windows, I'll mention the Windows version and then the Mac version. But on our Windows computers here, if you go to the Start menu, go ahead and search for Notepad++. We have lots of code editors out there. We're going to use a very basic, no-nonsense editor called Notepad++. This is for Windows. Um, you have to install it. You have to download it. It does not come with your, with your copy of Windows. You have Notepad, which is not that good. You have Notepad++. On the Mac side, we have a bunch of other editors as well. I'm going to make a couple of notes here, and I'm going to put these notes in the network folder. You can write some notes, or you can just wait for me to put these in the network folder a little later. Code editing software. Windows. Notepad++. You can search online for Notepad++. You'll find the download site. You have to install it at home. It's already installed on our computers. On Mac, we have also a bunch of other options. We have Sublime, Text Wrangler, for both we also have brackets, or uh, Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio is a big famous software. This is its little brother, Visual Studio Code. It's designed for more lightweight coding. So any one of these will work. We've got a bunch of them installed. We have Visual Studio on these computers. We have brackets on these computers. Um, we have Notepad. So I think we even have Eclipse. Do we have Eclipse in here? Not anymore. So we have a bunch of code editing software. You can use your favorite software. You can download it and use your own favorite one if you want. But remember, you have to do it every time because our computers forget. So if you install uh, Eclipse on these computers, you restart, it's going to be gone next time. In class, or in room, in our room in 209, we focus first on Notepad++. It's a very quick, lightweight code editing software. Later on, when we make our apps, part two and three, Visual Studio 2017. We won't have to worry about that until later. Uh, if, you, if you don't know Visual Studio 2017, now, uh, because of open source, there is a completely free version called Visual Studio Community. There's still Visual Studio Enterprise, which is like $2,000 or something. And then there's Visual Studio Community Edition for zero dollars. We will use that one in part two. It's already installed in these computers if you want to play with it, but we're going to use it in part two. In part one, we're going to focus on Notepad++. Does anyone have any experience with Notepad++? A couple people. Anyone have experience with Sublime? Anyone with Text Wrangler? With brackets? Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio. So we have a variety of people with different coding software backgrounds. They're all right and they're all wrong. Whichever you like to use is the right one, as long as you get the code to work. So our, our procedure to start off with is we're going to use this software, Notepad++. We're going to create an empty HTML document, play a little bit of H with HTML. 
just to kind of get our feet wet with the process of this class and then quickly start to use frameworks to start with templates so that we don't have to write from scratch, <coughs> from zero, our, our apps. Here in Notepad, let's go to File New. In Notepad++, <coughs> let's go to File New. File Save As. I'm going to save this to the desktop, but remember you want to save this on your flash drive or email it to yourself. And usually what I do at the end of the day, I put a copy of my code in the network folder, just in case you want to confirm your code against my code. But we're going to save this uh, june13.html. Save as type hypertext markup language. Notepad++ lets us edit basically every kind of language, programming language. So we're saving this to the desktop, today's date.html, save as type hypertext markup language, HTML. So we've got a new document ready to go. This is the best thing and the worst thing. A brand new document ready to make any kind of app we want. The worst thing where do I start? So the first thing that we'll do here, we're going to use again the universal HTML language, which in part two we will see, well, how can that convert into the proper language? Because every platform has its own native code. With what we'll learn in part two, our HTML universal code will be converted to all platforms. In HTML, Again, we're not really going to be able to start from zero very much, so if you've never done any of this coding, remember to raise your hand. I'm happy to help you out, uh, help each other out if you do so. However, I, do it, I ask that you do it at a reasonable volume. You may be distracting someone or me while you're, just, while you're uh, helping someone else. In HTML, we're writing tags. We're writing the less than and the greater than symbol. Again, we're going to go pretty fast. If you know this, you know where we're going. If you don't know this, we're going to go pretty fast soon. Less than symbol, greater than symbol. And in between, exclamation point, D-O-C-T-Y-P-E, space, HTML. We're saying here we've got a document of type HTML. Conceivably, we could write other code by defining this doc type. So the type of document, HTML. This is, the, this is the syntax for it. This is the way you write it. Enter, next line. We're going to write another tag. Less than, greater than, and in between, HTML. So less than, greater than, HTML. This is the HTML tag. HTML code. Couple of enters. Less than, greater than, and then we have we have to close the tag. Slash HTML. So we're starting to write HTML. If you've never written HTML, it's going to be a lot of this. Writing the right tag for the right task. I want to write the tag to show an image. I want to write a tag to make a link, to make a pop-up, to take a photo. We'll have the right code, the right tag for the right task. In between, I'm going to press tab. I'm going to write some sort of code in between. Angle brackets, head, angle brackets, slash head. Yep. So most of the time we're going to write tags that have a pair, except that we don't, and then I'll mention when. So this head tag, it opens and it closes. Next line, body.
obviously our syntax is we have to write the code exactly the right way. A book like this one reinforces these concepts. Again, we won't go step by step. This is 500 pages. This is step zero. Uh, we will obviously take a lot of concepts from it, but then move quickly. Then we'll talk about JavaScript. That's 600 pages. Step zero. So we're going to cover a lot of these concepts, not page by page, but enough of what we need to, to do what we need. These books tell you every tag, every code, basically. You don't need to know every code. Uh, it may shock you, but I don't know every code. Yes, I'm the instructor, but I don't know every tag. I don't need to. I can look it up when I need it. I can go online to find the right tag for the right task. I was just doing an app a few days ago, and I needed to remember, how do I do this? I looked it up. Okay, that's the code. You don't have to have all the code memorized all the time. It's impressive when you can rattle off all the code, but that's obviously going to impress only some people. What's going to impress people is that you have an app that works. We'll back up inside of head. There's a head block, body block, all of this is an HTML document. Here's another tag, title. 99% or so of the tags have a pair. I'm going to stop saying angle brackets, I'm going to stop saying slash, I'm going to use shorthand very quickly because the syntax is pretty obvious. Opening tag, closing tag, or uh, starting tag, ending tag, head slash head, title slash title, body slash body, HTML slash HTML. The exception so far is there is no pair for the doc type. Pretty much all tags will have a pair. In between title, I'll tab that and I'll say here my first website. This may not be your web first website ever, but just imagine that it is. In our process in this class is we're going to write code we're going to save our work, and then we're going to run the code. So, so far I have not saved. This little icon here is telling me it's red. It's telling me I have not saved. So you want to click the Save button, or File Menu Save, or Control S. And the Save. It turns blue. Run. And then we have various uh, web browsers. Up on the Run menu, we have Launch Firefox, Internet Explorer, Chrome Safari. Pick any one you want. I'm going to go with Firefox just because it's the first one on the list. Our process. Write code, save the code, run the code. Let's check our results so far. Run, Launch Firefox. It's going to start Firefox. Now I thought I typed my first website, but I don't see it. It's in the head. It's in the head. It's in the title. It's in the tab. There it is. It's in the tab. So the head block focuses on metadata. It focuses on information beyond the main body. This is in the head. If I wanted to display something in the body, I need to write something in the body block, in the body section. So I'm going to go back to my code tab, and I'm going to write, traditionally, it's classic that when you first write code in a language, the first thing you do is the classic hello world message. So we'll follow that tradition. Hello world. Save it. Launch it. Oops. Hello world. Hello world. Uh, type it, save it, run it. That is launch it in your browser. See the result. This is our process. Type code, save code, run code. Hello world. Let's pause there. Does everyone see something like this? Anyone having a little trouble?
we get it. If you already have this experience, this is very low level, we'll get faster soon. But um, this is HTML. This is the code that we'll write to create complex projects, to, uh, you know, uh, activate Bluetooth, to communicate between two phones, to turn on the camera to, t to scan a barcode, to uh, save data in a database, a user login system. We'll cover all of those things with these building blocks. Once you learn how to activate the camera, you decide how to use the camera feature in your app. You may not use the camera in your app, that's fine, but you kind of, you, you learn it and it, uh, you get the building blocks. Um, this is HTML code, they're in pairs. We have the ability to write comments in our code and I recommend highly, especially as a beginner, to write comments in your code to give yourself notes. So let's say, uh, I'm going to back up to line 3 and give yourself a new line 4. In line 4, I'm going to write a comment. This is a weird tag. Less than, greater than, and then between exclamation point, dash, dash, space, dash, dash. This is the opening and closing tag, pair. It looks like this. It does not say comment or anything. Body, head, etc. Comment. It's written in that way. And any type, anything I type in here is a comment. It will not be processed. So you can use this to write comments, such as head block displays content outside of main viewport. Technically, the body is the viewport. So this head stuff appears outside of the body. You wrote a comment. You can write any comments as the code as we write our code, and I recommend it to give yourself notes. This is also very useful if I'm working with a team to give notes to other people on my team. Don't forget to fix this. Or give notes to myself when I come back with to my code a month later. This can be divided into multiple lines as long as you have the opening and the closing tag. So actually, I'm going to go to the end of that and press enter a couple of times to move the starting tag to its own line. And in between, I can have as much, as many comments as I want. Add the title tag here to show text in the tab, in the browser tab. Some of these notes, obviously, they're just notes. You can type them exactly what I'm typing or type your own notes. That's fine. Jumping down to body, whatever line number that is. In my case, it is line 12. Body block. Main visible content shows up here the viewport. If you save it and run it, none of that should appear on screen. Your commented code should not appear on screen. If it does, you didn't open and close your comment tag properly. Another possible error is, I try to run it, and some of the um, some of the code disappears like this. I wrote this code, I, I saved it and ran it, nothing appears. In my case, I accidentally did not close my uh, comment tag and it made the following all a comment. It deactivated code that used to work. So you see here at the end of the line, whoops, I didn't finish the comment code. 
so it never finished the comment, and all of that code became green, which is the delineator that this is a comment, it's not active code. Different code editors use different color coding. In our case, green means it's a comment, blue means it's a tag. You don't have to memorize the colors because different editors use different colors. And we will see that we can actually change our color scheme for various reasons. Just be aware that some type of code is some color, then another type of code is another color. And if you were to click on a tag, like title, it should highlight its pair. If you click on HTML, it highlights its pair. This is again another aspect of a, of a civilized code editor. It tells you, here's your code, it starts here, it stops there, you wrote it properly, plain old notepad or other coding software might not show you this, which is always a detriment. You know, Dreamweaver, I've used Dreamweaver a long time, but its code editor is terrible. It doesn't have some of these great simple things that a modern editor does, like code completion or code highlighting. This is what we have so far. I never marked specifically this here. It's part of the body. But HTML is hypertext markup language. It's a language, a computer language, where we can mark stuff. I've marked, here's the body. I've marked, here's the title. That's the ML in HTML. The HT part hypertext we'll get to when we make links. But it's all about markup. And technically, I did not mark Hello World as anything special. Let's back up in my case line 13 and I'm going to write the tag h1 that's a 1 not an L and then stop h1 at the end of the line I'm marking that make this an h1 a heading 1 save it and run it to see how that processes h1 So before, the words are pretty puny, after, big and bold. That's heading one. We could add a comment here. Heading one tag makes text big and bold. Comments can be written on their own line, as a single line, multiple lines, or at the end or start of another line. So as long as you wrote the comment tag properly, it should work. There are a few exceptions of where you can comment, but generally it's pretty open about where you can add your comments. Uh, notice also, uh, on every other tag I've written, I've usually separated them into multiple lines, <coughs> head, title, etc. But then suddenly, heading one, I didn't separate. That's valid as well. I can have the tags and the content on the same line. This is exactly the same as if I had done this. If I had moved them like that, it's the same thing. The reason why you may do one or the other is somewhat of a preference. I personally like to break my tags into multiple lines when it is multiple lines of content in between. But when it's one word or sentence that's kind of basic, I like to keep it on one line. That's just personal. It's not right or wrong. It's just the way that I like to write the code. A simple line is on one line. In multiple lines broken into multiple lines. After that heading one, 
Let's write the P tag, P for paragraph. And I'm going to break that into multiple lines. So we have different tags that do different things. Now I'll write a paragraph here. In the P tag, I'll write uh, mobile apps dev class part one. Enter instructor Victor Campos. Enter San Diego continuing education. Save it and run it. So we have some content in a paragraph tag. I wrote three sentences. I run the code, and then I'm surprised they're no longer paragraphs. They're on one line. The default behavior of HTML is to ignore empty space, also known as, known as white space. It also ignores enters. I press enter here. But it ignored it over there. Mobile apps there, class part one, instructor the victim. It didn't put an enter there. So the default behavior ignores white space, ignores enters. Guess what? We have a tag to break that line. We have a tag for a task. My task is I want to break those lines. So at the end of the line, another tag, br, for break which does not have a pair. This break tag doesn't have a pair. And if you, if you know a little bit about um, HTML, if you've taken other classes, you may see the tag written as br or space slash br. Both are valid. I usually teach it that way, simply because it's a little less typing and they're both the same. And you're going to get into a lot of arguments with everyone online, which is the right way. You're going to say, well, on the specification, it's this, but this browser does it like that, and I learned like this, and this book says like that. In some of these instances, everyone's right and everyone's wrong. So that's a break tag. If you write it the other way, great. It's just like speaking a dialect. You are all speaking the same language, it's just a dialect. Um, so that breaks the line. And now the result is that those lines break to the next line. Next paragraph. So I'm starting a new block, a new paragraph block, more content. And I will write here, uh, sign up on the website. That would be nice to have a link there. We're going to use the link tag to make this clickable. I want to click somewhere there to open a website. There's a tag to make a link. Um, I'm going to wrap, we will wrap that link tag around that whole block of text. So I'll back up to the beginning of the line and I'll add the link tag, which is A, letter A. There is a tag named link but it does something else, completely different, that we will use later. The A tag, you can think about it as in, you can memorize it by active link. I believe technically it's an anchor, an A tag. Good spot for a comment. A tag to make an active link to a URL. Not a tag, but a tag. 
with a tag named A. Requires an attribute. That's going to be a link, but no address has been specified, no URL. So we add an attribute to completely define that A tag. Inside, inside of the tag, within the angle brackets, space. And then here I add an attribute about where does this go when you click the link. href hypertext reference the link equals quote end quote when I teach most languages especially if they have a pair I like to close the pair before filling in the details because I may start my h1 and I forget to close h1 and everything will become in h1 and look weird I'm going to write a paragraph. I'll start the paragraph, I'll end the paragraph, and then I'll fill in the detail. It's personal preference. But if you're a beginner to this stuff, I recommend you do it that way. Start and stop your tags, and then fill in the detail. Even here with this quote, I may be in a hurry and start typing it, open quote, type a huge address, and forget to end the quote. This turned purple. It thinks it's a, it's a link. So then everything is a link, including this stuff which is not. So I would recommend you open and close your elements, goes back to the proper color, and then fill in the details. The detail here is the address. I'm typing the address of the college. You can type any address or the address of the college. Save it and run it, and that is the HT of HTML, hypertext. We've marked uh, some content to have a hyperlink, a fancy way of, you know, a link going from one page to another. So I'm going to save that and I'm going to run that. I click sign, sign up on the website new link. So that was on my project. I clicked on sign up on the website. It goes to the new address. The problem here, it works, but the problem here is that oftentimes people visit a website and then, okay, I'm done with that website, I'm going to close. Oops, they closed everything. They closed your page as well. We have another attribute. You've probably seen that links open in another tab or another window. We have an attribute that does that. A tag, where does it go? href. How does it go? Another attribute. Target. So we actually have a target tag, but not a Walmart tag. I said that same joke and no one laughed this morning too. Target. This is uh, what kind of window will it open in? And basically, in this uh, in this way, we same syntax: uh, attribute name, attribute value, attribute name, attribute value. This is the syntax: attribute <coughs> name equals quotes value, attribute name equals quotes value. The value of this attribute is underscore blank. That's the underscore symbol. That targets a blank window or tab to load this hypertext reference that we've wrapped around that sentence. Now that result is I've got my site a person clicks sign up, it opens the new tab. They're done with that tab, back on our site.
So on the left is our raw code, on the right is our rendered code, so to speak, our interpreted code, our compiled code, so to speak. There's our code, there's the result. That web page, that project is there. 26 lines of code or so makes that. Eventually, of course, we'll have 2,600 lines of code or 260 lines of code. You know, we'll have a 500-line project, a little project. But here we have 26 lines so far. If you've never had, if you've never written any HTML before, you're a web designer. You're an app developer. You've written some code. We're going to get much more complex, of course. If you've seen this stuff before, this is obviously baby steps. But we need to uh, learn to crawl before we can walk, before we can run. We will be running in this class, definitely. I'm going to crawl a little bit. I'm going to walk pretty quickly. I'm going to run eventually. But we'll take a break, but little sidebar here, HTML code. If anyone knows the history of the internet or computers or the web and such, um, does anyone know? When was this language invented? 1989. Good. Who invented it? After you add the target, what's happening on the website? After you add the target, when you click the link, it opens yeah. a new window. It shows the, the project in okay, a new window. Before that, just shows the website. After target is going to open it spatially in a new window. Yeah. Before it didn't do a new window. And we can do also more specified, for example, your name or the class exactly. Yes, we will look at that too. How to change the color, the size, everything. So it's going to be another target. Nope. Target is only used dealing with the link. So we don't use target for anything else, basically, except for links. My question is that after you, what does blank mean after target? It's opening a new window. Any window? On the the link? window of the link. What we typed in href opens it in a new window. And we can also find, uh, just go to the choose classes. Uh, yes, on the website, yeah, you can use the website as is. It, we went to the original website. No, here, on my website. Oh, uh, on this website? Yeah. We can we can make the link directly to choose classes if we know the address. Right there, picture. If we have the full address, we can make it go directly to that choose class. We can copy and paste from if we go to the website, mm -hmm. the original website, choose classes on the yeah. Oh, we can copy that address and put it there. That's right. But I didn't follow from the first step. I couldn't find this. Well, uh, we'll do a break in a moment. So, 1989, HTML invented. Anyone know who invented it? Isn't it interesting? One of the most important inventions, and a lot of people don't know the person's name, uh, Tim Berners-Lee. In 1989, in Europe, a, a university student, 1989, invented HTML, which is a variation of other languages, but invented this concept, a way to make a document with the big idea of linking. Today, obviously, links. I look at a document, I click to go elsewhere, but it had to be invented at a certain point. And before 1989, there wasn't exactly this sort of way to do it. So in 1989, this language was invented, put out to the public. Tim Berners-Lee, he's still alive. He's actually been knighted by the Queen of England, so he's Sir Tim. He still uh, he helped bring in the 2012 Olympics and all of that. And he invented this code, and he gave it away free to the world. He didn't copyright it. He didn't lock it down. He gave it free to the world. And literally, it has changed the world. We do our online banking on websites. We talk to friends and family on websites. We buy things, donate charitably on websites. Uh, countries are revolutionized because of the internet, because of the web. I remember the Arab Spring a few years ago. People were able to communicate with each other on websites because the government had shut down the newspaper, the TV, the radio, but not the internet. So literally, this that you've written here has changed the world. It looks very humble at the moment. But think about that. This is a language that lets anyone create a website, have a communication medium, make an app, 
sounds very grandiose, and it is, because this is an invention. Um, let's think about that as we take one more break. Take a break until 8.05, a little bit more time. We'll be back at 8.05, write a little bit more code, we'll go on.